wonder if you have heard of the icebreaker game, um, Two Truths and a Lie. Well, be not afraid. We are not going to do two truths and a lie all through Advent here, but what we are going to do with these midweek reflections is each week we are going to do two questions and a song. So every week I'll meet with a different member of our congregation, ask them two questions around Advent and Christmas so that you might get to know them better. And then I've also asked each of them to share with us a favorite Advent or Christmas song. So we hope it will be a blessing to you as you get to know these friends better and as you get to hear some music that perhaps is new to you or music that is familiar to you in this season. Well, our very first guest on two questions and a song this Advent is Eileen Mansfield. Eileen, thank you for saying yes to this and we look forward to getting to know a little bit more about you through the, your answers to two questions and a song. So the first of those two questions for you today is, do you have a favorite Christmas tradition? Oh, I do. And when I was going through my list of Christmas traditions, I, what came to mind was, um, when we first moved to New Jersey from New York State, uh, we moved into a lake community. And at the time, there, there was a Catholic church. Mm -hmm. And our church was called a community church. And we had 32 different denominations worshiping together. Yep. And that's where Bill and I grew up in church. We got to know each other a lot better through the youth fellowship and things like that. So my memory from that church, and I left there before I turned 12, was when they did the lighting of the candles. I don't, I can't tell you when it happened, but it was very close to the end of the okay. service. And everyone, after the benediction, everyone left with their lighted candle to mm. take the light out into the world. And everybody went, at the church looked at the lake, so okay. all the candles went out, and there were, you know, the people that had property close to the lake, they had all their trees with their white lights, and it was just, it really brought home the light of the world to me, right. and doing it with special people, because Bill's parents and my parents yeah. worshiped there, and my daughter was baptized there <laughs> and that really beautiful visual of literally taking, taking the, the light. light out i yeah. don't think we could get away with it in this day we could and age try. but um <laughs> anyone who, who they were pretty they policed who got candles pretty you know the light that real flame candles mm -hmm. um they trusted to get out of the church okay right. it was before all these you know little battery operated okay. candles which if the children get those then they can carry to they're the safe after. but right. i think we'd be leg legislated out of being able to do that perhaps <laughs> perhaps let's put but, it in our back pocket well if no one asks yes <laughs> it's easier to ask forgiveness than to get permission this is this is true <laughs> these are the lessons we want you to hear this advent season <laughs> So the lesson is that the light has to go out. It can't be mm. kept inside these walls. Yeah, that's a beautiful lesson. And so my second question for you today is, did you grow up going to church on Christmas? And if so, do you have a particular memory or reflection from that time? Christmas Eve? Yes, okay. or Christmas Day. If it fell on a Sunday, Yes. We were, went to church <laughs> on Christmas. Um, but we always went to the very latest service. Okay. And um, it was lovely. Part of what I was just telling you was um, it was also lovely because as I got a little older, 
I got to know Bill and his family better, and I babysat for his little sister <laughs> and all that. And it was like, a, it was a very well blended group of people from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. And uh, just being, it was important to be in church on Christmas Eve, my whole life, no matter where we were. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a Dutch Reformed church in New York, and then we came to New Jersey, and I middle schooled and high schooled um, in a community church. And then we found us here. We found here. And so that's, the memories are all pretty much Anything related to Christmas Eve had a Christmas Eve service in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Christmas, um, because frequently we didn't have a regular service on Christmas Day. Okay. Too many little kids. Yes. <laughs> wanted to. Stay I can home understand. And play. Yes. Yeah. And then for your song, we're asking uh, folks this Advent to share with us a favorite Advent or Christmas song. And I know that when you told me yours, I had not heard of it before. I suspect that might be true for others. Why don't you tell us a little about what you've chosen? Well, it's originally a French carol, and it's called Bring a Torch, Jeanette, Isabella. And it, while a lot of people sing that as if the child's name is Jeanette Isabella, but it's Jeanette comma Isabella. Okay. So there are two little girls involved. Okay. And um, it started out, <clears throat> they, they were much more, their crush included townspeople and milkmaids and, you know, Barbers and, and they are all in their nativities at that time yeah. too, and so this is uh, a song I originally learned in French, <laughs> and it's from the Provence area, and to this day, on Christmas Eve or Christmas, the people of the town. The children dress as milkmaids, no. or oh, I forget what the little boys were. Anything shepherds, maybe, but yeah. I don't think it was a shepherd. It's a, not a traditional nativity the character at the way we think mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And they come out of their houses with candles lit, and that's how they go to the church. Oh, beautiful! And the reference I was reading didn't say if they recessed. Okay. The same way. But it's a beautiful little um, easy hymn that they are still singing, and it was from the 1600s. So it's my favorite because I took French for many years. <laughs> and in high school, we had one French teacher, and she only knew a few songs in French. <laughs> so you were limited. <laughs> so I've been singing this since high school. And then I don't remember if we did it in college choirs, but it's, it speaks to me it, yeah. because it's, it's not the kings and the angels. And mm -hmm. it's, it's the town people being called by children with torches. Right saying, he's here, right. come see him. And they are all in the, in the pictures I've seen of their Christmas pageant kind of mm -hmm. things. All the townspeople are in with all the nativity people. Characters. So that's why it's a favorite. Well, I think those two images that you shared at the beginning and then at the end are sort of combined with each other because the song seems to remind us that, no, it's, this is not just a story that's reserved for the mm -hmm. shepherds or the kings or exactly. the angels. You are a part of it. 
um, the children will lead you mm -hmm. as they do so often here. And it's your job to take that light, to take that story mm -hmm. and bring it into the world. Thank you for introducing it to us. You will hear it today in English, not French, <laughs> but maybe next year we can work towards that. So I hope that you will enjoy this recording of Bring a Torch. And Eileen, thank you for sharing with us today. What a blessing to us. To me especially. Thank you for asking. Absolutely. <laughs>